Topic? Well, we're going to be multiplying by one digit numbers. Yeah, I've been waiting for this lesson. Now, our learning target, our purpose, the reason why we live. Well, maybe not that far. Mr. Wara, calm down. No, it's our essential question. It says, how do you multiply by one digit numbers? Pretty simple, to the point. Right on. Yeah, but of course, you know, we can't do any of that. That's right, unless we. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because it's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. It states, each day an airline flies nine commercial jets from New York to London, England. Each plane holds 293 passengers. If every seat is taken on all flights, how many passengers fly on this airline from New York to London in one day? Wow, that is real world, my friends. Real world. And who do we have over here? Whoa, check out that dude. Whoa, he's the Queen's guard, protecting Britain's royal family and their residences. Okay, he looks pretty serious. My goodness, look at that fluffy hat, though. That is really, really kind of cool, kind of bizarre, too. He looks very serious. Okay, we'll leave you alone. Now we have a little, looks like the unlocking part of the problem. We have the little key slot. It says use place value and regrouping. Step one states, estimate. 293 times 9. It says think. 300 times 9. Well, sure, yeah, 293. That's practically 300. And I'm going to round it, which is what estimating is a little bit. We're just kind of rounding that number to the 300 place because we have hundreds in our actual number. So it makes more sense to round it to 300 as opposed to like 290. So let's go ahead and put 2,700 because all we're doing is, is we're going to multiply the simple facts, which is 9 times 3, and then we're just going to add on our two zeros. Let's look at step 2. Step 2 says multiply the 1s. Sure, we're going to multiply the 9 times 3 in our real problem. So now we're, we did our estimate, now we're moving on to actually multiply, doing what we call the algorithm. Now it does say that we write the 1s and then regroup the 10s. Okay, yeah, we take the 9 times 3, which is the 1s, which is equal to 27 ones. Now, you might say, but Mr. War, we can't do 27 ones. You can only have up to 9 in the ones place, and then you're supposed to regroup. And that's exactly what we're doing, because look at that number 2. Yeah, that number 2 up there, you wonder, why do we put him up there? Well, I'm telling you, that's why we're putting him up there. It's because we're regrouping the 2, which is a 10, and it needs to be in that column. Otherwise, it can mess up our answer, okay? Now, step three says multiply the tens. Look how the two nines are highlighted blue. Well, we take the two nines, and we learn that pretty young. Many of those little young whippersnappers that are in first grade go, I know nine times nine is 81. Okay, so it's 81, but we need to add that two. And 81 plus two is 83. That's why we put the three down there, see? And then we carry the eight up into the hundreds place because we're regrouping again. So 9 times 9, and those are 10s, are going to equal 81 tens. And then we added the two regroup tens there. So now we have 81 tens from above plus the two tens that we're adding on. Remember, that's right up above the 9 is going to be equal to 83 tens. And that's kind of what I just said. Then we write the tens and the regrouped hundreds because 83 tens, when you think about it, 83 tens is really 830 because we have eight hundreds there that we need to move over. The three stays down because that's the tens. Let's move on to step four. Now step four says multiply the hundreds. Okay, so now we're multiplying the nine and the two. That's 18 plus eight is 26. And you can see how that is highlighted there with a 26. So nine times two hundreds, okay, is gonna give us 18 hundreds. And the reason why they're using all of these I know that some of you have learned the standard algorithm for multiplying uh, numbers, and you're wondering, this sounds so strange. 
But what this particular lesson is trying to do for us is trying to teach us that when you're actually multiplying that nine and that two, to not forget that it's nine times two hundreds because that two is in the hundreds place. That's the reason why it's being written this way. Now it says add the regrouped hundreds. So we had 18 hundreds because that was a nine and the two, but remember we carried over eight hundreds, yeah, up above. So those eight hundreds has to get added on to the 18 hundreds giving us 26 hundreds. And of course, 2,600 is equal to 2,600. That means the same. So in one day, 2,637 passengers fly from New York to London. All right, we got our answer. But then we come down here and this is mathematical practice one, I believe states something about the reasonableness of answer or something like that, or maybe persevere in problem solving them. I don't know, what is mathematical practice one? Here we go. Here's mathematical practice one. It states make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. And it does say when presented with a problem, I can make a plan, carry out my plan and evaluate its success. It's just kind of like the before, during and after. You explain the problem to myself, helping you understand the problem. During looks like you're going to persevere, monitor your work as you're going. Then after that comes into the reasonableness of answer. Is my answer correct? How do I know? Okay, well, thank you, the mathematical practice one. Time for you to go. Adios. How can you tell if your answer is reasonable? Well, I think the way we can, one way we can tell that our answer is reasonable is, remember, we made an estimate at the beginning of this particular problem. Let's take a look. There it is. Didn't we say that 300, we were estimating, said 300 times 9 was equal to 2,700. And look at our answer here, 2,637. That's extremely close to our estimate, extremely close. That lets me know that my answer is reasonable. So how can you tell? That's how I would say, I would say, I know, and there's different ways you can write this, but I know my answer is reasonable because the actual answer is close to my estimate. And again, there's different ways you could write that. That's just the way that kind of made sense to me. You could rephrase that. That's the beauty of writing things in your own words because it helps with your own comprehension, your, your own understanding. Copying from a neighbor. Yes, this doesn't help. That's so true. I don't know who that was, but it sounded kind of like me in a tunnel. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next page. Boof! Ding! There we go. Where are you? There. There you are. Example. Cool. So we get like another problem. So there's like the practice one and they're not supposed to give us as many clues. Let's see. Ooh, but first, I have to look at this. <gasps> look at this. The Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, built for the 1889 World's Fair, was the world's tallest man-made structure for 40 years. So anyways, this one says a commercial airline makes several flights each week from New York to Paris, France. Ooh, very similar to our last problem. But now we're going to France. If the airline serves 1,978 meals on its flights each day, how many meals are served for the entire week? Woo, what a problem. Is this like giving us some clues here? It says, to multiply a greater number by a one digit number, repeat the process of multiplying and regrouping until every place value is multiplied. Okay, that is some great help. Yes, I know exactly what we need to do. So when we get, it doesn't matter that our number's larger now, that we're in the thousands place now, when our last problem, we were only in the hundreds place, but it's letting us know that we just repeat the same process. We just have to make sure that we multiply every place value from ones, tens, hundreds, and then thousands. It does say, think, 2,000 times seven equals, and it does, you know, we rounded that number again. Why did we round to 2,000? Because the highest place value in the number that we actually have is thousands. So is that number closer to 1,000 or 2,000? And it's closer to 2,000. Now we're just gonna multiply, remember, our simple facts that's 14. And look, we have three powers of 10. That lets us know that we have 1,000 because didn't we just learn that 10 raised to the third power, right? That's going to be equal to 1,000. Exactly. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, step two. Multiply the ones. Okay, I can see they're helping us out here still a little bit. Eight times seven, yes, is 56. They put the six down below. They had to carry the five over into the tens place because it's tens. It can't stay there in the ones place. So we regrouped. So we wrote the ones and the regrouped tens. So the five will get carried over. Okay, step three. Now step three says multiply the tens. Okay. So now I had my seven times seven I can see up there, which is 49. So 
49 tens. But remember, I have five regrouped tens up above. So I have my 49 tens plus the five that were up above. Now I have 54 tens. I can't put 54 down below, right? I have to regroup again. So I'm putting my four down below and then I carry my five. And my five is going to go into, right, into the hundreds place. That's right. Very nice. Now it says multiply the hundreds. So I have seven times nine, which is 63. So that would be 63 hundreds. I add the regrouped hundreds that I have now, which is the five. And so I add that on. Okay, so I need my 63 hundreds here. And then remember, I carried over those 500s, so that's going to give me 68 hundreds. So now I put my 8 down below, and then I'm going to carry that 6 into the thousands place. Now let's go to step 5. The step 5 says multiply the thousands. Okay, 1 times 7 is 7. Perfect. I add my regroup thousands to that 7. There were 6 of them up above, so now I have 13 thousands. Now I'm done. I, I multiplied every place value. So now I'm just going to write it as 13 down below because I have no more to add. 13,846. Again, I can check for my reasonableness by just going up and reminding myself, what did I have as my estimate? Well, there was my estimate, 14,000. Isn't 14,000 really close to 13,846? It is. So the by making an estimate on your problems makes it much easier to check your work. You can always go back and double check your work. And you know, uh, the other way you could always do too is by dividing, but that's a lot of work. If we were to take 13,846, we could divide that by seven, and then that should give us our 1,978. Anyway, oh my goodness, I hear some jamming music in the background. You know what that means? Yeah, in this video, what was that, like two minutes? I don't know, I must be in some kind of time warp. That time flew by. I really, really appreciate you guys coming along and watching these videos. If you like what you see, or you, even if you have some suggestions, my friend, hey, why don't you subscribe? Join this grade, Math Wizards. That's right. Now, my friend, as I always say, live long and prosper.